The Nigerian Police Service Commission has suspended Abba Kiari, and that's because U.S. court documents have linked him to self-confessed internet fraudster Hosh Poppy. We'll be discussing police reforms and corruption in the Nigerian police with a police reform advocate this morning, Mr. Bosinde Arikpe, who joins us from River State. Good morning, Mr. Arikpe. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me on your show this morning. All right, let's first get you assess the situation regarding uh, the DCP and Abakiari and um, um, Hosh Poppy, with those court documents linking them and the allegations of corruption. Well, <clears throat> assessing, uh, if you ask me to assess the situation, I will tell you that uh, that is an everyday situation in the Nigerian police. Is an everyday situation of the officers and men of the Nigerian police. It's just that that of Abakari has just been brought to, to the public limelight because of uh, the internationally celebrated uh, protester and Mr. Obsunun as Hosh Poppy. But however, that is not to take away the fact that uh, the same officers also do very good jobs. It's just that uh, as they do, when, when you do 100 good job and you do one bad one, and the bad one will always uh, come back to haunt you. And that's why we've been on the advising side and telling them that they must serve and uh, ensure that their hands at all times are clean and, and nothing is linking them to corrupt practices such as that of uh, the suspected cases of uh, the Abakari and Hosh Poppy relationship. So I think it's a normal day team in the Nigerian police. You understand me? If Nigerians are to start giving you details of account numbers they've transferred money to and all of that to police officers for one illicit activity or the other, I'm not sure any police officer will be doing it. Well, um, if, if you do a good job and you, you know, take kickbacks while you're doing that good job, um, it almost doesn't feel like you've done anything you know, that you should be praised for. You know? And I, I think we should also get that you know, straight, that for every time that a police officer has to take bribe you know, in order to do his job, um, it, it should not be recorded as being a good job, and doesn't, I don't think you know, anybody should be called a super cop if you know your your uh, career is tainted with you know stories of bribe taking and the likes. Um, but I want I want to speak on you know the main focus this morning, which is being able to reform the police to a state where we're able to fight corruption in the police force. What do you think is lacking in that uh, regard? Is it lack of accountability, lack of proper systems? or you know, just lack of honesty in the whole, you know, whole uh, pol uh, police force? Okay, there's two things I think you should understand before you reform the police. Uh, those of us who are extremely deep into this uh, reform and uh, uh, security activism in the country, there's something personally I have discovered, and I think it's correct. Though it's a hypothesis because it's coming from me, it's not yet a fact. But uh, if you reason with me, you may see it as a fact from your end. But from my end, it's a hypothesis. It's just what I'm thinking. Now, what am I saying? First of all, I believe that the condition, the current condition of the Nigerian police, the federal government, like it. They like it because it takes away attention from what is happening at the federal level, government level, and put all the corruption charges on the Nigerian police, therefore leaving the government to break. That's one. Two, I want you to know that if the Nigerian police is properly reformed and they are properly of standard and they carry out their job as it should be as world police on the standard of world police, I want you to know that the federal government will suffer. Because once our police is no longer corrupt and they are now straightforward, they will now begin to ensure that every corrupt people in government are brought to book. You understand me? So the government will definitely suffer. And I'm not sure Nigerian government has grown to that level of maturity to allow a system to be 100% free of corruption. They will allow that system to still have something they can hold them to. So I'd like to hold the federal government accountable to the corruption in the police. Then if we want to reform the police now, number three, what we will be doing to begin that reform is first of all, to look at their retirement plan. When an officer knows that when he retires, he has nothing to go back home to. And even for him to be able to push the files for his retirement document to begin to assess his pension, which is next to nothing, he still has to begin to bribe the same organization and the same people he worked with for them to enable him to push his file for it to get to what he's supposed to get, which is actually next to nothing. Now, when he's on the job, he tries to work for his retirement. And that is what will give account for the huge level of corruption we see. Because the officers are working for both their current job tenure and they are also working for their retirement. 
because they do not have faith in the retirement system of the police force as well as their pension system. Now, how do you equate this when somebody does not have a hope when he leaves the job? So while he's on the job, he would like to gather everything he can gather. And this is how the option starts. That is why. But, but is that Officers justified? Are... Mr. Araipe, um, we understand where you're coming from to say, you, you even made a statement that you would blame the corruption in the police force on the federal government. And you went on to talk about, you know, these structural issues regarding, you know, lack of retirement plan and all that. But is that a justification for being corrupt? Now, there is no justification for any form of corruptness. In fact, if you ask me to come down to Lagos, maybe I work with Plus TV, for example, and you ask me to come down to Lagos this morning, and uh, you, don't, you, you send me maybe a transport fare to come down to Lagos, and I pay the transport fare on my way to Lagos, and I decide to branch and see my brother in Oshun State somewhere, and then it cuts into the working time, and then I come back, and then I tell you, um, I'm sorry, I'm coming this late. I had to spend a day extra. I'm sorry, it was because I had to, if I had taken the flight, I wouldn't have been here. I would have been here earlier. I wouldn't have had time to brand. But because it's a boss, we had a stopover in Oshun. I said to go see my brother, and that was why I came in. That is not an excuse. Yes, flight would have been better to bring me directly to Lagos, but it's not an excuse. So corruption is not justifiable by any excuse. It's also important to note that these people are aware of this salary structure before they even enter the force. So corruption is not an excuse. But however, what I'm saying is that when you want to reform something, you must consider all the loopholes. And these things I mentioned this morning are part of the loopholes. Now, when these loopholes are tackled, then you can now say you are reforming. First of all, what is the reform? Reform. It means the thing is in form already, but you want to return it again to a better form. So if you want to make something better, you look for all the excuses that make it not better, which is what I was outlining before you uh, cut into come. So I am not justifying corruption in any means. I'm not saying that if nobody feeds you and nobody trains you and then you grow to become an amroba that is the society's fault or is your family fault. No, an amroba is an amroba. What I'm saying is that the society would have been able to do better, and they should do better to minimize people having these excuses. But it doesn't mean if you have it, it is the fault of the society. No. So I do not justify corruption by any means. But I'm telling you, we're talking about reforming the police. These are some of the steps that needs to be taken. Then two, that was, I'm sorry, I said three. Now four, moving forward, a lot of people joining the Nigerian police night are talking of reform. They are joining the Nigerian police force because there is no job in the country. So they are not joining the Nigerian police force because they want to serve. They are joining the Nigerian police force because they want to make a living. They want to make money, not service, money. The security agencies are places where people go to serve, not with the mindset of making wealth, but with the mindset of service. You understand me? But now people join the police force because that's like the only option they have. They don't have job. They wouldn't want to join, but they don't have job. So let them just join the force and make money. They are aware that the salary is nothing, but let us just join. Since there are other ways we can make money in the force. So immediately they join. You see people hustling to be in tactical teams, hustling to be in this place, hustling to be posted to prominent areas, even working their posting, making sure they go to lucrative places where they have options of making extra money. In fact, to most police officers, the salary doesn't matter. It is the extra money that they are now after. Why are they after the extra money? It was because the system was not taking care of them. All right. So, Mr. Rank, um, there was no proper hoping. plans for their welfare when they retire. Yeah. So now, if, if you allow me to just round up, yeah, go ahead. Now, go ahead. what they want to do is make hay while the sun sets. But these things can be discouraged. For example, if somebody knows that when I retire, I'm going to take home my first. 10 million, 20 million, 50 million when I retire. And then I'm going to be earning X, Y, Z amount for such a period of time. You will see that the discipline will be there. He will want to take bribe of 1 million, even if he's earning just 30,000, because his mind is at the retirement. If I take this 1 million now, it will stop my 15 million when I retire if I'm caught, because they will sack me and I will lose this benefit. It will serve as caution. Now, that's on the issue of the men. Now, maybe when you finish, I, I see you, want to, you wanted to say something. So when you're done, maybe we're not going to the issue of uh, equipment, working and funding, and their expenses and allocations and other things. Well, so, so this is what I wanted to ask, because from the things, the problems, you know, that you've mentioned, you know, there's so many of them. You know, there's the, you know, the, 
the retirement, you know, and lack of retirement benefits. There's those who want who join the force because of, you know, a lack of um, employment opportunities. There's a government itself who wouldn't want a corrupt free police force, um, you know, because of course that would affect them. Um, and so it almost seems like, you know, you, you cannot then talk about possibilities of reading the force of corruption because these things have existed for a long time. And if they don't change every one of these factors, then we may not be able to, you know, find a corrupt free police force. But I wanted to ask, you know, just for what it's worth, is there a possibility of still being able to find punitive measures for corrupt police officers? Is there a way that we can reduce the police officers who are likely to take bribe because they know that they will be caught and they will be punished? Is there a way that we can find ways to stop a police officer from collecting, you know, funds from innocent citizens or locking up a, a citizen on, you know, with the orders of a, a rich man? These, you know, little bits of, uh, uh, you know, corrupt uh, practices here and there. Is there still space for punitive measures in the force? while these factors that you've mentioned, uh, mentioned rather exist? Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, there are so many ways we can stop corruption in the Nigerian police force. There are so many ways we can stop this issue of a prominent person with connection, either government connection or private connection, or having so much money, being able to interfere in police issues and give orders that will make them arrest citizens, whether innocent or not. There are so many ways we can stop them. Now, I wrote to the Inspector General of Police, the past, the immediate past Inspector General of Police, and I wrote to when Idris was the Inspector General of Police, uh, Idris was the Inspector General of Police, I wrote to him and I gave him these ideas on how he can do it. I also wrote to uh, the immediate past Inspector General of Police, uh, Mr. Damu, I wrote to him too, and I gave him ideas on how this can be done. I spent countless days in the in the office of the, the PSO, that is Principal Staff Officer to the Inspector General of Police, I spent countless days in this office. I keep going to Abuja. I flew with my money from Port Harcourt. Can, can you share some of these ideas with us? More than five occasions, I flew to Abuja. Only for them to minute my first time, they minuted the letter to the PRO for advice, and then I had to go and see the PRO. I don't want to go into what transferred there. The corruption is so much. Uh, I think uh, DCP owner now is a commissioner of police. And then even uh, the... The, even uh, Frank Kumba, before he became a uh, police uh, PR owner, I've been speaking to him when he was area commander in Songwe Oshun Abi Ogun. Yeah. We've been talking of these issues, that this is how it can happen. I see him as a very smart officer. But maybe when you sit in that level of exposure now, maybe uh, well, a lot of Mr. things Rackley, can, can we share now, some of the One of the things the I want to share is this. Now, I may not be able to share everything because I'm a con as well. But some of the basic things I want you to know is that uh, Let's borrow a lead from the American police. I have studied them so much, in as much as I do not compare them and the Nigerian police. One thing you should understand is this. The, Nigerian, the American police had so much corrupt cases too, years back, decades back. And one of the ways those cases were stopped were through public involvement in policing, such as uh, uh, NGOs and associations, as well as uh, a neighborhood good involvement in security. Now, when this involvement came, that is how the IACP started, the International Association of Chiefs of Police, that most Nigerian police officers attend every year. And myself, I'm an associate member of that organization in the US. That was how it started. It all started because of the need for the police and the public to have a place where they mix together, where the public have a say in police activities. You understand me? That is what help the American society. That is why today in America, people have a say in their policy. Unlike here, where people don't have a say, you can be whisked by the police to that. Tomorrow morning, you are charged to court, and the court will just send you to prison and keep you for DP or RB, waiting, waiting to, to, to uh, advise. And before you know it, you're already in prison. That doesn't happen there like that. Why? Because of public involvement. Now, what am I saying? I wrote to the uh, police. I told them what we should do is, number one, those of us that are into security activism, we, we have uh, a lot of us. We have the, we have in Lagos. We have my friend. We are uh, both. We communicate. That is Shebu Awosaya Sega Link. We, we have people in Abuja. We, I am in Port Harcourt and River State. We have people all over the country. Pick us out and let us work with the police. The police cannot to the police. Let us represent the police. In these different states, 
And what do we do? Let our opportunity, we have no power over them, they are carrying arms. But let us be able to interfere in issues that regards members of the public when they make complaints. We are going to work with the ACP, Shakole, the complainant response team. Even them, they are political, so there is little they can react. But we are citizens, we are not in the system, so we will be at least justifiable a little. Our actions will be focused a little on the citizens, while also ensuring that the police are doing their job, and when they are accused unnecessarily, we are not going to be in support. But whenever they are properly accused, we will assist the police to mitigate it before it gets to any level. Why did I make this suggestion? On my own as an individual, I've assisted hundreds of hundreds of Nigerians who had issues with the police, even in the dancers. I have put my life on... Is that right, babe? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, do you understand how deep corruption has eaten into the Nigerian police force? Let me tell you something. There's something I wanted to tell you. You cannot go to equity. Equity is he who comes to equity must come with clean hands. You understand me? So when I heard that the Inspector General of Police has suspended the uh, DCP Abakari, I don't know if it's the Inspector General of Police. It's supposed to be the Police Service Commission's job, but the Inspector General of Police also has the right. Yeah, he made a recommendation, recommendation, according to the news. He okay, recommended that he be suspended. For Abakari to be, suspect, to be suspended. Now, I'm just going to put it in a parable form, and you people should decipher the meaning. It's simple. He without sin should cast the first stone. That's all I want to say concerning that issue. You see, we should stop seeing people as scapegoats, and when they come, we just give them as a scapegoats when we're in position of leadership. Knowing pretty well that we are all guilty of such a thing. That's what I want to tell are you. Are you making Please. allegations on the integrity of the current um, Commissioner of Police, Mr. Raipi? Commissioner of Police? Yes, Inspe Inspector, of Police? Inspector General, I beg your pardon. Of Police? Yes. Well, I'm not making any allegation. I'm discussing with you. So what you make of the discussion is for you. So if you want to make an allegation, you, you can go ahead. He's a public figure. You can say what you want to say. You understand me? But what I'm saying is that uh, he, without saying, should have the first term. Now, that America, in as much as we are against corruption in the system, the corruption Nigerian police force, this before even the IG joined the police force. You can be part of a system, even when you are not corrupt. The, system, the corruptness in the system can come and put you in a position where you can't even be seen as not being corrupt, whether you are not corrupt. That is the case of the Nigerian police. Okay. Even someone who joins the police today will be seen as corrupt, not because he has taken any bribe or participated in any form of corruption, but the level of corruption in the system, once you become part of the system, it automatically ropes you. So, Whether so, you are part of it or not. So are you, are, you, are you then saying that there is almost no you know, answers to reading the police of corruption if these things that you've you know, earlier mentioned aren't actually taken seriously? Because from what you've mentioned, are the things that you discussed with um, uh, Shegwa Wasonya um, and the likes, you know, it still doesn't take away the unemployment of society, still doesn't take away the you know, um, um, retirement benefits that are unavailable still doesn't take away the hunger in the police force. Um, so how then, you know, do we get the answers to these questions? And this uh, okay, one well, thing that I'm hoping that we can find out is when a police officer, some of the things that Abakari has been accused of, when a police officer does, you know, things on that level, who should punish that police officer? Because suspension really would never be the answer. Number one. I told you that we as citizen members of the public that are into security should be incorporated into the system. Why should we be incorporated? Because the system cannot help itself. Now, for people that are Christians, this is why God did not say a man that is on earth already should die for the world. He has to bring a child that nobody impregnated a woman. That's what I mean. The police cannot help themselves. It is only we, the public, that can ensure the police is working well. So the selected few of us that are into police advocacy, that are into public advocacy, security, bridging, and all of that, should be uh, involved in the system in a way we can represent the public interest in the police force. That's what I was trying to tell you. That way we can minimize their reaction in corruption towards the public. That's one. And then two, also help the police to, to begin to bring to bear still to the public what they are suffering. For example, I have built toilets for police. I have supported in building uh, uh, police formations. I have repair stations. I have suspected, supported in repairing police vehicles. I have pictures evidence. I have repaired police vehicles up to the tune of 300 and something thousand for each plus. On my own, 
as a citizen because I know that they had issues of fueling, they have issues of bad uh, vehicles. And I took the fame of going around. I talked to Nigerians, come support me. This police station don't have a toilet. And we built a water system for them. Come support me. This police station, their vehicle is very bad. We need to help them. That's the only way they can be able to protect us. And the public listened to me. Why? Because when they have issue and they are arrested anyhow, I normally help them for free. Also well, how, many, sure how, many more, how many more police stations are yeah. you going to build? How many more vehicles no, are you I, going no, to no, service? No, that's not what I'm saying. You are not getting the point. What I'm saying is that as one person, without any recognition, individually have been able to rise to this point of being a bridge between the police and the public, being able to help the public to be freed when they are illegally arrested, being able to support members of the public to the tune of hundreds on my own without any recognition and influence whatsoever from any part of the world, from any top. On my own as a Nigerian, I've done that. Now, on my own also as a Nigerian, I have been able to repair police vans that are bad, calling on Nigerians, come, let's repair this, building toilets for police. So if we are now officially incorporated into the police force activity as bridge between the police and the public, what we are going to do is that at that point, we are going to have enough strength to assist thousands and millions of Nigerians that will, that are, that, that will suffer from the police. We'll be able to help them from brutality to corruption issues. They won't be paying for bail. Many things will be able to stand for that. Then from the police angle, we'll be able to carry all the sufferings of the police, such as the welfare package, such as uh, uh, funding and other packages. We will now sit down as citizens and work on ideas on how our police can serve us better and move to National Assembly, make laws, move for these laws. Talk to those public who have been assisting when they have issues. They will now assist us to lend us their voice and we'll be able to peacefully begin to push for proper reforms and proper welfare packages and monitor these welfare packages. When a policeman retires, we will be able to jointly as members of the public from his community and we'll be able to monitor that his benefits are given to him. Now, you see, everybody will now become their local police one way or the other. And the police now will be left to do with nothing other than professionalism. While the federal government will understand that every member of the public is now part of the policing, so it will become difficult to corrupt them. Now, it's not that American police is not corrupt. It's just that people are so aware of the policing activities and system and they are so involved that even when you want to corrupt them, it becomes difficult because the public is involved already. Right, now, we need to move way. this policing to that level. Okay. So just quickly as we wrap up, um, we're, we're focusing on this case with Abakiari and his connection to Hush Puppy. What do you expect to be the outcome of this investigation panel that has been constituted to look into the case? Also, um, how do you foresee this matter playing out in case, you know, if there's going to be a possible extradition of Abakari for him to be tried in this case in the U.S.? First of all, I, I'm sorry to say this. I, I am not in support of anybody setting up a panel to try Abakari. I am 100% against it. And I'm, and I'm speaking with that. That does not mean he's not corrupt or the allegations are not true or they don't have facts. Yes, they may have facts. But what I'm saying is, how many times have Americans extradited, uh, extradited their citizens to Nigeria to face charges? Or how many times have Nigerian uh, government uh, or the police in Nigeria has uh, talked about uh, uh, a corrupt policeman in America, and then Nigerians have gone to tell them, and then Americans have uh, set up a panel to interview their officer and then repatriating to Nigeria, sorry, I mean sending down to Nigeria, extraditing to him to come and face a Nigerian court trial. Is that right? But I think, the difference, I think the difference here is... I think the difference here is um, Nigerians and, you know, I guess also Americans, you've also mentioned that the American police system might have its bits of corruption, but in situations like that, we don't, we haven't seen that many, if we're being honest, but if in situations like that, you believe that the American justice so system, if, if, we if believe that the American justice system will, this is the point, no, sir, this is, this is the point, this is the point I'm trying to make. We believe that the American justice system will take care of that police officer, or rather will, you know, um, uh, treat that police officer punish him if possible in, in, the, um, in the US. But we don't have that same fate here in Nigeria. That's, that's the difference. And if we say, oh, you know, we should you know, not allow, how many times would the American, uh, would the US, you know, let a, an American be extradited here to Nigeria? It very much is sounding like, oh, we should protect our own simply because, well, let's protect our, ours because it's, uh, even if it's corrupt. Also very much sounding like, Oh, well, this is an evil man. Don't let, you know, other tribes come and tell you that an evil man is corrupt, even if we know he's corrupt. That's very much what it sounds like. So, 
yes, you may not agree with the extradition, pro extradition process, but what would you expect to play out in this case now that the panel has been set up? I want us to play out is very simple. First of all, uh, like you have mentioned, America has a good justice system. I hope you know that there are evidence in America that are not admissible in court based on how this evidence are gotten. Yes, of course. That's America's justice system. Okay. Fine. It's a clear evidence. It will indict the person, but because of the way it was gotten, the court will say this is not an admissible evidence. That's what I'm saying. First of all, let's look at the case. Hush Poppy was not arrested with relationship or any connection whatsoever with Nigerian security authority. He was arrested in faraway United Arab Emirates without any permission from Nigerian government, no involvement. He was now extradited to United States to face corruption charges. And he's facing his corruption charges. And then he is now naming Nigerians that he has done businesses with, and one of whom is uh, Abdakari, he's a police officer who is not expected to be participating in such illicit activities. But what I'm telling you is that I am not saying that uh, he's innocent and we should not try him. I am saying that we should build our system and lead our people of this level of corruptness. And I do not support anybody trying Abakari for this particular issue that is coming from the U.S. But I will support any form of trial on Abakari in Nigeria by Nigerians in a Nigerian activity. And until we can do that, let this serve as a deterrent to us so that we can build our system and push for what it's supposed to be until it becomes. But I do not support anybody because America said, I'm not a fan of the Western world or any foreign body coming to become so, so big to us. No, I believe so much in Nigeria, irrespective of the failures of government at all levels. But you see this, I will not support it. All right, as Mr. In Nigeria, I will not support that. Mr. But I do not support Day. that Harris action after. Absolutely. All right, Mr. Boston Dereke, um, police reform advocates. We thank you for always coming on to share your perspectives on security in the country. Thank you. All right, so um, that's the discussion there. Um, quite contentious towards the end regarding where should he get justice or where should justice be served. But I do understand your perspective because when you look at our judicial system, cases can stay in courts for decades. So what really then is What's justice? What's the guy's name from Manambra State, you know, who was accused of uh, murdering um, a boy that her father had to go into a river um, to check for his body. We spoke about that during the NSAS protest. Um, can't remember his name. It was a police officer who was accused of, of numerous crimes till today as we speak, and I'm sure till the end of next week and the end of August and, 20, and the end of 2021, that case will never come up. I just can't remember his name. But there is that case. There's numerous others that kept being swept under the rug and we never hear about them. And that's the reason Nigerians don't have faith in the system. And when Nigerians have some hope that somebody can be punished for their crimes or for, for some level of corruption, it doesn't matter where it is, because in Pluto, let it go, let it happen in Pluto. We will take that same Jeff Bezos air, uh, spaceship and go to Pluto and get him to a traffic corruption. That's the way Nigerians feel about a case like this, because there's pain amongst Nigerians who have suffered from this same corrupt Nigerian police system. And let's not also forget that the crimes, um, you know, that Abakar has been accused of aren't necessarily the barbaric guy that he's, he was, he, he sold. They aren't because he connected two tailors no, together. Not at all. Let, let me, let me, let me really bring up evidence. I'll, I'll quickly um, share it. It's simply because, according to the FBI documents, and uh, Mr. Arakpe also needs to understand that the case we're talking about here is not because of what um, Hush Poppy said. <laughs> That's not the challenge. These are screenshots. These it's are... overwhelming. Oh, sorry, Gay. Let me bring out this evidence for you. We're talking about, you know, Hush Poppy reaching out to Abba Kerry, Deputy Commissioner, you know, of police, and, and, you know, basically texting him the number of his partner in crime who had blackmailed him. Now, this is a message that Hush Poppy sent to Abba Kerry, according to the U.S. court documents that are now all over the internet. Now, um, Hush Poppy said, please, sir, I want to spend money to send this boy to jail. Let him go for a very long time. Time. And Abba Kiari, a deputy commissioner of police, replied, Okay, bro, I understand. I will discuss with my team who arrested him and we will do something about it. My point is, my point is, um, the things that Abba Kiari is being accused of, the reason his name is there on the FBI documents and court documents as an accomplice to this crime, is not because Hoshpapi said, I called him. The in. evidence These says it. These are from 
um, phone records um, and messages and emails and all that the FBI was able to... Receipts. Yeah, exactly. Pull together as a, in the course of the investigation. Same with every other person who is there. They've gone through every single type of, of, um, uh, of resources that were necessary to put these names together. And that is just for one particular case. There's a lot of other thousands and millions of dollars that Hot Wheels are also accused of of, um, of uh, taking off, you know, people across, you know, the United States and America and the rest of them. But this is just for this particular case. And so it's not, you know, when he says, oh, you know, a lot of evidence, you know, cannot be, you know, um, uh, put forward in court because of how it was gotten. It's not because of somebody, you know, singing to the FBI. It's because of what their records show. Um, we we'll have, would we'll have to, you know, probably just take a break here and go to our next uh, topic. Um, stay with us. The review of the APC Ward Congress is in the um, last weekend. Uh, we'll be going through that. There's a lot of, you know, squabbles here and there. Uh, party factions in different states. Uh, some places, of course, had bits of violence here and there. And we'll be talking about that after this short break here on The Breakfast. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>